The topic, Kenny Clark. The question, is he worth his contract? Let's just get into it. So Kenny Clark just got a four-year deal worth $70 million, a $25 million signing bonus. So getting $25 million just for writing your name down seems pretty great. Uh, and I think he was very deserving of it. And let's just get into it, and we'll start things off with this play. The way it's going to work for Chicago is they're going to have two guys pay attention to him, but not really. So what's happening is that uh, Chicago's center is going to just try to push him a little bit, uh, just in a way where the guard can now swing over and he can block Clark and try to get Clark to move to the right side of the screen. Uh, the center's moving up to block a linebacker. So while there are technically two guys on him, this isn't really a double team because it's more of a difficult block personally I would I think I would have rather just a straight up double team but that's not what they're doing here and it's going to be regrettable as you see right when this play starts to develop because of how quickly Kenny Clark is going to get straight to that right side of the screen okay I'm going to just do some editing in real time because I want to get this video out uh, I, I screwed up on the graphics uh, I had it as the center and guard which is why I just said center and guard now I just realized it's the guard and tackle so uh, my bad on that one, but uh, it's the same idea. I just had the graphics on the wrong player. Uh, and as you see, Clark is able to get through very quickly right here. So while typically this is not a very good thing, it's not the end of the world. Chicago has a tight end. He can run over. He can block Clark. You would rather use Clark on, you know, use that tight end to block someone else. But hey, Kenny Clark's good. He uh, wins his matchup sometimes. So you got to do what you got to do. However, Clark's so big, he's able to absorb that hit and still run over and help make a tackle. And I think that play just kind of goes to show what kind of guy you're dealing with. If he can literally take three guys on to some degree, again, not exactly, but uh, he, he's definitely a very talented player. While Clark definitely gets the majority of his credit for being a great run stopper, uh, and rightfully so because he is a fantastic run stopper he can come through in pa the pass rush to some degree as well that's not his role I mean you know he's pretty much listed as a nose tackle and while he's not always lining up in the nose uh that's kind of his role is just be the guy who's a run stopper be the guy who's hard to move in the running game but he can he can pass rush pretty decently well and I think if they had him try to do this more often he probably would get more pressures and more sacks what he can do really well is a play like this, where basically what he's going to be trying to do here, the move he's trying to pull off, is he wants to get his right arm and basically just swipe it onto the Chicago player's right arm. So obviously, uh, this way, this would mean that uh, you're getting further over to the right side of the screen, since you know when they're facing each other, the right arms are on opposite sides of the body. From that, he'll use his left hand to sort of just push along that side, and he's going to try to get through that way. That's what he's going to try and do. Uh, and watch how well he's able to pull this off. It's so effective and so quick. He's able to get pressure on Trubisky quickly. Uh, and Trubisky has no chance at running away. And again, for all Trubisky's faults, scrambling in the pocket is his biggest strength. But he was not able to have anywhere to go because Clark got there so quickly. This plays another example of that, where this time it's a double team. But he's not going to do this move on just one guy. He's going to do it on both of them. Watch out. He first gets the guard, then gets the center, and is able to run over and get a sack right there. So, again, I'm not trying to say that he's Aaron Donald. Like, like there's there are definitely better pass rushers on the interior. But he is someone who can get it done here and there. He, he'll get you a couple of sacks a season. Uh, again, that's not what makes him special. But I do think it's worth bringing up that he can be effective in that area. I think what makes him so good is his explosiveness off the line in some areas. The way that he can move so quickly, this is a good example. Uh, it's going to be a run to the left side of the screen. Uh, so the center is going to be snapping the ball and pulling to the outside. Uh, the left guard, he's going to be blocking. Uh, he's going to be blocking Clark one on one right here. So 68 blocking Clark. And, you know, typically you look at sort of how I've positioned that block. Uh, is he's trying to get Clark to the right side of the screen because it's going to be a run to the left. This makes sense. But Clark, he trusts his explosiveness and he trusts his abilities. Uh, and so watch how he basically just right when he sees that 68 is trying to push him in that direction, he just accepts that and just blows by him. He just sort of pushes off of him. Now, this is a risk because if he isn't able to make this play, uh, this basically takes himself out of the play and guarantees there's going to be a big gap. But again, he's so quick, he is able to run over, and he's able to grab on just barely to make that play. Uh, again, it's quickness, it's speed. I mean, you don't think 
speed when you think Kenny Clark. You know, he's not exactly someone you imagine uh, being a, a sprinter. But listen, he's really fast. Uh, and it, it is crazy how fast some of these NFL athletes are. And he is one of those guys. And I always, you know, I, I sometimes say fast. Really, it is more explosiveness than speed. Uh, and the difference being, you know, explosiveness is basically just when you're stopped to when you run three steps. It's kind of like, how quick do you do that? And for Clark, he's very explosive. One more play I want to talk about will be this one. He's going up against Minnesota. Uh, Minnesota likes to use fullbacks. They're using a fullback here. Uh, and so basically that means that there's going to be one-on-one matchups. It's Clark has a one-on-one matchup against the center, which is not good for Minnesota. Uh, but, they, you know, they have attack, uh, a guard one-on-one blocking the other a Green Bay player in the area, they have a fullback running out to block a linebacker. So if everyone can make their blocks, everyone is accounted for and they can get a big gain. The, of course, the flip side is that usually it requires your center to make a one-on-one block. And when you have Kenny Clark lined up right in front of him, that's difficult to do. And even though I think Bradbury is pretty good, watch how uh, you're going to see Clark just sort of push him back, pushes him You know, this is what you call moving the line of scrimmage backwards because now when the the back is going to have to try and run through the the gap, this now means that it's further, uh, you know, away from the first down than you want it to be. So now if this was three yards further down the field, then even if you got tackled immediately, you're still gaining three yards. But now that it's two yards, you know, negative two yards down the field. Now, if you get tackled immediately, you're losing two yards. So obviously, there's value in this. But there's also value in where he's positioned and how it does kind of look like he's moving over to try to clog up that gap already. Uh, so what this does for you know a halfback is you kind of say, okay, maybe I'll try and move a little bit over more, try and get a little closer to 94 than to Clark. Uh, but that's a bad idea. And Clark is silly would run out and help make the play. So uh, just a tremendous run stop by Clark. That's what he can do. Uh, he's... Again, fantastic run uh, defender, one of the best nose guys in the NFL. Not that he just plays zero tech, but that is what he can do, and he can be incredibly effective at it. At the end of the day, he's a tremendous athlete, and listen, I think this contract is well worth it. Kind of my mindset on contracts is when you have a star player, you just pay the star player, and you trust that you can find uh, you know, everything else through the draft. You can find the role players throughout uh, and if you can't do that, you're not going to be successful anyways. So might as well at least keep your stars. Uh, obviously, you can't just hand out money, but uh, I think this is a fair contract. Uh, and I think that Clark is really good. So I think this works. Good move for both sides, in my opinion. I think this is about what it, what he's worth. I think this feels right. What do you guys think? Is this an overpay? Is this an underpay? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.